Okay, so next up, uh, we'll focus on customer development. And here, basically, if, we, if we're talking about customers, the customers matter the most. Their opinions is, is, is in brackets here because it's, it's their opinions is different than, than the target of, of being able to validate the value delivered to the customers and whether they agree. So by asking, you get information, but it's very delicate balance on how do you ask and how do you test. And, uh, and on the material, on the formation phase, on how to validate the ideas alone, uh, without the product, there was a lot of valuable learning and experience that was shared that I highly recommend, if not anything but look at the materials that are freely available to go through all of those. Because it's specifically really trying to get the knowledge before there's a product. But because we are now on the validation phase, now we have already done that, so we have a lot of, of that existing information already. But now it's about showing the product, testing with the product, observing customers using the product, or uh, creating uh, an experience for them like they would be using the product without actually using the product. So it's really about showing, not talking anymore, not asking, but really showing or creating them the experience. So the, the famous saying here by Henry Ford, if I would have asked from my customers, they would have wanted to have faster horses. So if there isn't a car, an automobile existing, then, then they can't imagine it. So don't ask customers to imagine. Show them and then, then test and not just ask their opinions about it. I don't know how many would have think the car is cool or it looks great or it's very hard to say, probably all of the variations would have been there, or there's probably facts, historical facts about how it, how it has gone. But the point is that none of those really matter to get the real experience of whether they actually see the value, can experience the value, and are willing to pay directly or indirectly of that value. So open idea, validate idea potential, create product specs, create product brochure. So this is how to get to the product. Create product mockup. So this was already in the in the, in the presentation, you can take one customer journey and you can create a, a wireframes. You can create a journey by just creating the whole thing in PowerPoint or in Google Slides. We do that still today. Uh, even we use some more advanced tools as well. But the quickest way is really to, to do all the user interface, design all the buttons and things and have those assets in a Google Slide and you can quickly create version of the product if it's a, if it's a user interface uh, based online service very quickly. The same goes if you design a journey of a, uh, of, um, of, of for, for example, a voice activated product. You can say, you can put the, the word what you say and then you can show what the answer is um, on the screen. Or, or you can make a video out of it uh, to demonstrate. But again, the key here is you don't have to have the actual product to be able to test. Of course, the closer you get it, the better it is. And then you can, you can create the wireframes, you can use tools like Invisa app, where you can create a clickable, very authentic experience. And there are many other softwares that you can also do to create clickable outline of the user experience and let the user even test it and see if they can understand 
the terminology you have used, the text, if there's enough help context and, and so forth. But all of them, the point here is that you need to create all of these things. What is the, 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 the idea and then to conceptualize that into specifications, create product brochure, presentation, create mockups, clickable demo, create product instructions. And the point of instructions is to try to make them disappear. So if you have to create instructions, which is a good exercise, create them, uh, create the instructions, but then try to embed those things into products so that separate instructions are not needed, but it's more intuitive. But now you have instructions also on the background. And you can test each of these different things individually. You can give someone just two instructions and say, do you know how the product works based on these instructions? And so forth. So multiple different ways of validating and getting feedback, but not just by asking, but showing everything as if they would be existing or if there would be an existing product or service existing. So all the side things that any existing product has, you could also test separately and get feedback on. Define business model and pricing, and we'll go into how to test this. But basically, if you, if you don't have the business model and pricing, then it's harder to, to, to test whether customers actually appreciate the value that they may be saying that they are getting but would they be actually paying for it? And designing a sales process. So that's also part of, like if now we know what the product is, you can design all of these different things, aspects about the product without actually having the product itself. And each of these things are method of testing, but at the same it's preparing for the next phase, assuming the validation, uh, gets done. But the validation is partly done through these exercises and also the product. It's not just the product. It's not just the working, working software or interface or device. From customer's perspective, all of these different things should be existing in the product or when the product is available. So the less they see these things, the, le the less they can think the product is existing. Start selling while creating the initial version so you can do a crowdfunding. You can do these uh, different new methods to, to actually sell. But the reality is that a lot of things in the world are sold without ever the products existing. None of the, you know, the, the, the new A380 airplanes are existing in the warehouse for someone. Oh, I would like to buy a new, new plane. None of the cruise ships are there, or when you go to restaurants, hopefully your steak is not pre-cooked before you got there. So a lot of products are sold before they are ever made. So see how you can apply that, because that's part of the validation. And the fact is that if you can sell it, it's more likely that you can actually deliver it. But even if you can build it, doesn't necessarily mean you can actually sell it. So the more you can test in getting demand and then building the product, the stronger the validation compared to building a product and then testing and, and having done already all the effort of investing into that product and then made it, nah, not interesting. So focus on making cheap, flexible first version first and then actual versions and iterations later. But this is really to, to look at the product more holistically and understanding how customers think about products and what do they uh, expect to see. And this may vary the level of what, how much it is depending on what type of products or service in question and what type of customer is in question. Is it a consumer? Is it a company? Is it a bigger company? Is it a smaller company? And, uh, and so forth. We have a question yeah. about the previous slide. Um, if you ask to your customer what they want, could it be considered you're just focusing on incremental innovation? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it so that uh, 
that that's a factor in that sense. It's more of a, a, a type of validation point. So because there isn't just one type of validation, there's basically uh, stronger and softer uh, validation. So, but the opinion or asking about something is is, a, is an indication, but it's still an opinion. It's it's not the same as someone actually buys the product and waits it to be delivered for you. They still like the whole point is that even if you sell a product that doesn't exist, uh, the key point is that. Uh, uh, Majority of the products that we buy today, we buy them and we never have seen the products because we buy them online. So we buy every day, every people are buying all the time, cost services, uh, products, physical products, digital products, without ever having seen the product before they make the purchase decision. And this is the indicators of how much you can actually validate with three real value uh, whether that whether that is, is valuable, but where it comes from, this iterative uh, innovation is more from uh, bigger companies and the life cycle. You know, we all have expectations for you know the next iPhone, the next Huawei phone, the next Android phone, the next uh, OS X uh, operating system, the next version of that and that. Those are all expectations. They already exist there. <clears throat> And usually those products, the iterative development has come through based on the feedback of the previous product. And some, some, some uh, additional research on that. So there's a benefit of when there's an existing product to of course get all the best feedback to make a better next product. And therefore the risk is much lower in that context. And usually then there's a brand support to support that as well. Okay, uh, customer development tools. Uh, so what are these tools like? So we have already covered the wireframe mockups tools, but uh, also uh, from the UX designers or user experience designers and researchers, uh, they really use these user stories to user journeys. So basically a user story is defining a user type uh, or a persona. And, and, and basically then converting that into how does a person like that or the customer like that experience the product through the first touch point and so forth until they get the value. So it's a bit different terminology, but it's the similar things that were covered on the formation phase on testing ideas. But then this goes into practical because now designing the product and the designing the experience you need those stories uh, and and, um, and you can also test various of these different things again at different levels before building the product and with uh, user journeys you can now then create the simple steps the process and create wireframes and mockups with those and then you go can go to customers and test and, and, and show those demos, demos and, and get their feedback to iterate before you have ever built anything more than that. You can get a lot of feedback to, to, to make it better and you can get also screen images to your website of the products that are coming and so forth. You can even do usability testing and, 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 and so forth with these mockups and clickable demos. Um, and you can use them to try to sell the product. So if this is a B2B case, it's very likely that you could sell the whole product based on this without actually having to code it first, depending on whether it's a smaller or you could get a group of 10 smaller companies to say that, that would, you, would you buy this, you get you know, a totally different price than when it's really out to help build the product and so forth. And then use versioning in everything so that, that, that it's a big part of capturing the, the validation learnings is that you have to have versions and, and versions of users journeys, versions of wireframes, versions of mockups, so that you know what learning was captured with which version so that you don't get lost between that. Okay, we got this feedback, but then, you know, there's five different iterations. So which one was it? 
and we so you have to keep track of these things to 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 make it a systematic approach then depending on the team setup of course for developers it's also if it's a if it's an online product if it's a digital product it's actually very easy to create the, the software the code that's not the problem it just feels for those who don't code it feels difficult but it's actually not uh, difficult uh, for the most parts at all unless it's like some of the complex machine learning things that require also a lot of data and types of things uh, but it's not regardless of whether it's easy or not uh, many of these things are much slower regardless of, uh, of, of resources if even if being able to do many of the other team members would be just sitting idle waiting for the next version of the product to be created versus testing with these other aspects and feeding and improving the user interface the, the, the knowledge of how to make the product intuitive the, the, the terminology the colors the buttons the other designs uh, a b testing uh, this is of course uh, the part you create a couple of different versions of the of the mock-up or product and then you test those uh, and collect what is the difference feedback if we test with you know bigger text smaller text color theme this color theme which kind of if we test with each of these with 10 different people what type of perspectives do we get just by knowing what's different in them even though the functionality wise they may be exactly the same online offline protos uh, measuring for validation so you can do this in person uh, from your click from the computer you can have a mock-up uh, in vision clickable demo and take a computer with the customer and let them test it with it you can send them a PDF that has a flow of, of things going on uh, and so forth, depending on how strong of a validation you need or how much additional learning you can get when you, you kind of just listen what other comments are coming through. And again, there are then uh, sets of questions and tools that go into more detail that you can tap into from the resource links here and the resource links from the previous presentation and then keep measures again have the KPIs defined what are you measuring what is the target and have the um, the targets clear what is success like if we're trying to get to certain certain feedback are we getting it or are we not getting it what is the number that, that tells you that that's that's enough 